But first, trying to meet the education needs of refugee children in a resource-poor country overwhelmed by new arrivals. Just yesterday, the United Nations announced one million South Sudanese refugees had arrived in Uganda over the past year. Many have ended up here at the Bidi Bidi camp, the largest in the world. Special correspondent Fred Sam Lazaro reports part of his series, Agents for Change. It's not often you find a school in Africa that provides meals to its students. We give them breakfast and lunch. You didn't get that when you were in school? Nope. It not only helps students focus on learning, but this simple plate of corn or maize and beans may also be the reason many show up at all. The school's 30-year-old founder remembers packed classrooms when he started primary school, but they didn't stay that way for long. We are over 150 children, but I remember by the time I was in primary seven, uh, we had about 15 children left. Lots of children drop out. Mm -hmm. They drop out and the problems connected to food. Joseph Munyambanza was born in the Democratic Republic of Congo, but his parents, like tens of thousands of others, fled to Uganda when he was six. For decades, Uganda has welcomed refugees from its war-torn neighbors, but even with the United Nations' help, its resources are very limited. Rwanda. Congo. Last year, I visited a school in Nakivali, a refugee settlement in southern Uganda. No lunch here and not much learning in classrooms crammed on average with 120 children. Few of the hundreds of thousands of refugee children in Uganda make it into high school, for which they must pass a national entrance test. We do education, but at the same time... Joseph Munyambanza was one of those few. He completed high school and received a scholarship to the prestigious African Leadership Academy in South Africa, founded by a group of Stanford alumni. Another scholarship from the MasterCard Foundation got him to Westminster College in Missouri, where he got a degree in biochemistry. It was a heady journey, far from his humble beginnings, but he says he never forgot them. You know, when I finished my degree, I already had my ticket to come back and most kids say, you know, you're crazy, you're not serious. Because, like, you know, the style is you go there, you finish your degree, and you get a job, you start getting money. One big reason he returned was an organization he'd founded while still in high school with a few friends. They volunteered to mentor and tutor younger refugee school children. And as Munyambanza traveled in the West, he was able to network with donors, raising funds for their group called Koborwas and for a primary school it runs in the refugee settlement of Chingwale. The 433 students are urged to think critically in a country where rote learning is the norm. And they are taught farming on land adjacent to the school. In Uganda, refugees are provided small plots of land and school parents also contribute produce. We uh, raise about five tons of maize and uh, part of it has to be eaten, but then a big part of it has to be sold. I had to bring money to continue to support the projects. So far, Korborwas has helped some 1,600 students pass the high school entrance exam and placed many of them in better resourced high schools away from their refugee settlements where they now attend alongside Ugandan children. Koborwas pays their tuition, room and board. We visited this school in the town of Hoima, about two hours from the refugee camp, and talked with Koborwas scholars about their goals. I would like to be a genetic engineer. A civil engineer. I would like to become a doctor and because I have seen people suffering a lot. I'd like to be a lawyer. A lawyer. One of their biggest problems, they said, is the stigma of being refugees, often taunted that they are freeloaders. Some of them also don't feel well when they see us studying, yet we are not Ugandans. So they feel somewhat resentful that you are being paid for, supported, and Ugandans are not. Yeah. Joseph Munyambanza says he faced the same problem when he went to school. You must be focused. That's why a Korborwas counselor is always on hand. Because we have a big vision for you. We do this because we believe you are the leaders of Africa tomorrow. 
several alumni have been launched toward leadership roles, attending universities across Uganda and as far away as Arizona State and Munyambanza's alma mater in Missouri. 23-year-old favorite Regina just received her degree in development studies from the United States International University in Nairobi, Kenya, a stint that took her to France and could have landed a well-paid job in a lot of places, but she returned home to teach at the Korborwas Primary School. We feel like coming back to our communities and helping the other people grow, it's very important so that we come together as a collective community. Those who are are given, those who are trusted, and much more is expected from them. He says improving the education system is the first step in rebuilding communities defined and created by war to open the eyes of children who have known little more than life in a refugee settlement. For the PBS NewsHour, this is Fred de San Lazaro in Chinguale, Uganda. Fred's reporting is a partnership with the Undertold Stories Project at the University of St. Thomas in Minnesota.